Uh, hello and good morning. Welcome everyone to this uh, webinar. I'm so happy you signed on this morning. Um, my name is Paula Land. I will be your moderator today. Um, and today's webinar is about addressing peripheral neighborhoods in sustain sustainable urban mobility planning. Um, this webinar is presented as part of the Eccentric Project. The Eccentric Project is something that I will be introducing shortly. Um, but uh, before we do that, um, I just want to give a quick overview over how you as participants can engage with this webinar. Um, uh, it's, whole, it's held on GoToWebinar, so many of you may know the system already, but just as a reminder, you're all muted um, and you can't unmute yourself unless I give you permission. If you want to ask a question directly to the presenters, you can raise your hand. I will be seeing that and then I will unmute you. You can ask your question directly. But of course, we also have a question pane that you can use to ask any questions you might have. Um, and I think it's a good time to just test the question function. Um, if you've attended uh, the webinars before that we've uh, had in Eccentric so far, you know this game already, but I would like you to just type in the question pane where you're calling in from, maybe the city or the country, and then also type what the weather is like today. I am personally in Freiburg uh, in the south of Germany, and it's very sunny but also very cold. Um, we had frost this morning. So yeah, maybe just quickly share with everyone in the question pane um, where you're calling in from and what the weather is like. This is just an exercise so you get familiar with the question function. Um, and then we can move on and have an engaging and interactive webinar. I don't see any answers coming in yet. Oh, here we go. We have someone from Bucharest, Romania, um, where it is also sunny and also very cold. Maybe someone with snow is also here today. I would be very jealous because I personally love snow. Um, All right, anyone else wants to share the weather or where they're calling in from via the question pane? It doesn't seem so, but let's uh, let's keep the invitation open. At any point you feel um, like you want to share, just uh, type it in the question pane and then uh, um, at least you know how it works and we know who is calling in into the webinar. Um, but okay, let's move on for the moment. Um, we're also recording the webinar, um, just for you to be aware. Um, and so the recording will also be available afterwards if you want to share it with colleagues or rewatch it. Um, so let's jump into the content for today. Uh, we have a great lineup. Um, we have uh, Carlos Verdager, uh, who is the technical manager for the Eccentric Project um, and also working for GEA21. He will be giving us an overview of um, the topic of peripheral neighborhoods and the inclusion in sustainable urban mobility planning. Um, and we will be hearing from him shortly. Then we are joined by Stefan Sinek, who is the um, who is an EU product manager and the manager of Civitas Eccentric at the city of Munich. Um, and he will be sharing perspectives from the city of Munich on the topic that we're speaking of today. And finally, Angel Aparicio, um, who is a local evaluation manager um, for Civitas Eccentric at the City of Madrid, will share perspectives from the City of Madrid um, on the topic of peripheral neighborhoods and the inclusion in sustainable urban mobility planning. Um, doop doop. So here, um, just a quick glance at the agenda. Um, I will be giving you an introduction right now and then attend. At 10, we will hear from Carlos on current challenges and potential solutions to achieving sustainable urban mobility in peripheral neighborhoods. Um, then Stefan Sinek will share with us how the city of Munich addressed sustainable mobility in new peripheral residential neighborhoods um, and some experiences and lessons learned. Um, and then finally, we'll hear from the city of Madrid um, on sustainable mobility options to improve the quality of life in high density peripheral neighborhoods. So you can already see there's a slight difference in the um, in experience from the two cities that we're hearing from. And then we also have some time for uh, a Q&A and final discussion. And then at around 11.20, the webinar will be over. 
So I've already mentioned that um, this is um, the final webinar that we're offering as part of the Eccentric project. You might be familiar with the project, but you also may not have heard of it yet. Um, so I will just uh, be presenting it to you very briefly. Civitas Eccentric is a urban sustainable mobility project uh, funded by the European Commission um, under the Civitas framework. And the approach this project has taken is in five living labs, um, it demonstrated the potential and replicability of integrated and inclusive urban planning approaches, innovative policies and emerging technologies. Um, it had five cities um, as part of this. Who dem it's the cities of Madrid, Stockholm, Munich, Turku, and Ulse in Bulgaria, um, who demonstrated and tested innovative sustainable mobility in peripheral areas, um, combining new policies, technologies, and soft measures. In total, um, there's uh, 50 different measures, over 50 measures that have been piloted in this project. Um, and it addresses two important areas that have previously received less attention in urban mobility planning and policies. Um, one of them is um, innovative solutions for sustainable mobility of people in suburban or peripheral city districts, and this is the topic that we're addressing today. Um, and it also looked at emission-free logistics in urban centers that keep the balance between quality public space and efficient local economy. So the topic of logistic and freight was also important. We had another webinar about this um, and there's a recording available online if you're interested in the topic of logistic and freight as well. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, this is the final webinar and this project ran over the course of four years um, and it uh, slightly over four years and it just came to an end. So today is also a great chance to really see some of the results, some of the lessons learned, and learn more about this process. Um, as I already mentioned, uh, the project piloted in total over 50 measures in six thematic areas. These are included as a service, safe walking and cycling, clean public transport, clean vehicles, and clean flight, flight logistics. And all these areas have a specific focus on peripheral neighborhoods. So not so much the city center, but peripheral neighborhoods. What we mean when we speak of peripheral neighborhoods and the specific challenges that uh, these neighborhoods face, um, this is something that um, my colleague Carlos will now be presenting on. So uh, Carlos, I think with this, I would give the stage to you um, to set the scene a bit uh, and introduce this topic to us. Um, so yeah, I'll be making you presenter and uh, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you. Let's see how I can. Whoops, I don't see now. How can I? Oh, sorry. Is here? The, uh, I I can't share the. I can't share the screen. I don't see. Mm -hmm. right, sorry, just a sec. Ah, no, uh, oh, yeah. Now, do you see the screen now? Um, maybe just give it a minute. It usually takes uh, a second oh. or two. <clears throat> This is not, sorry about, oh, do you see the, the screen? No, not yet, but it seems that your internet connection might be just a little bit slow. So maybe if uh, everyone can turn off their video, um, Angel and Carlos, if you could turn off your videos, then, um, then it might be easier. Um, Carlos, are you, are you sharing the screen now? Uh, I'm trying, but it... we'll 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 try again. Just a second. Um, yeah. Here we because... go. Now, now, try now. I, now I think I will be able. Great. This looks good. Yeah. Sorry for that. Do you see the screen now? It looks good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry about this. Let's see if I can put. Right. Maybe it's better to turn off the the video. What do you think? No, I think it's fine. It seems to be working fine. So, okay. uh, yeah, so, that's okay. Yeah. Oop. All right. Is now. All right. So, okay. Sorry about this uh, this function. Uh, well, I'm speaking from Madrid. Madrid is a, it's a rainy day today, but it's not very cold. So, okay, we we are not in the sunny Spain, but in the rainy Madrid. 
Okay, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much for this invitation uh, to the to be part of this final uh, webinars, eccentric webinar. I think it's a little bit of a responsibility after four years, we have to close this, uh, this series, but I feel uh, it's going to be an uh, interesting session. Uh, okay, this is my, my role here is to, to set the framework for the discussion today. So I will try to, to put on the table some uh, framework concepts. And I will begin with this word, suburban, we have used in the, in the title title of the of the of the eccentric project and this is this is uh this is the the first question uh, paula when you said did you say the suburban or peripheral because this is the question and this is uh where, where when uh, where i want to begin i think the the complexity of the urban cost uh, context is such that sometimes there are some uh, misunderstanding when we use in the terms to refer to this uh, very complex uh, situation, and this is uh, yeah, and this is uh, especially the case with the term suburb, eh? because depending on the cultural context, it can be uh, uh, read or interpreted in in rather different ways. In general, we can say can uh, say that in southern European cities, in the general, this term suggests the idea of of a, a peripheral poor neighborhoods, uh, whereas in the Northern European countries and, and United States too, it refers to low density areas with uh, uh, where, where the high ed with a uh, higher uh, economic, uh, you say, set and everything. So I think it's important to begin this with, uh, uh, with uh, defining what what are we speaking about? Uh, I think uh, I think when we speak about urban peripheries, uh, it's mainly a special a special reference, a special term, and we are referring to the inner outskirts of the city. And so we can say that the, uh, the urban peripheries, such as we are dealing in, uh, with in uh, in the eccentric projects, are neighborhoods. Of the city, they are attached to the urban center and centers, but uh, by the external limits of these urban centers, and there the, the residential use and activities have less added uh, value, dominate this kind of uh, residential use and activities, and there are so lower land uh, prices in general. This is the this area that is uh, is, is around the urban centers. They are served mainly by urban public transport networks. Somebody says that uh, uh, urban peripheries is where the bus gets, it's the maximum where the bus gets. Most of the services and equipments are uh, exclusively local, and the bulk of the displacement are radial in nature, both towards the urban centers and towards metropolitan, metropolitan areas. Now we will see which uh, uh, metropolitan areas are. And the transversal displacement or urban peripheries are, are uh, usually are more difficult uh, due to the lack of mobility infrastructures and lack of continuity of streets for walking and cycling. Sometimes this is uh, the case in Madrid, this is especially, uh, especially clear that the, the urban neighborhoods are just like in a radial disposition with sort of edges or pledges among them that uh, are less uh, communicated. And what are uh, both sides, to the inner side and to the outer side of these urban peripheries? The, the inner side, uh, to the center of this, uh, in this radial uh, scheme, a structured system, there are the urban centers. They are the neighborhoods located around the original nuclei of the cities. This is especially the case in European cities where something, especially in the big cities, there are even a, uh, a court that is from uh, uh, from <laughs> centuries ago. And uh, sometimes it, there is a middle age 
center and around this, these are the 19th century extensions normally, and all these together form the original nuclei of the cities, especially, as I say, in the European uh, context. They concentrate most of the urban services and facilities at the service of the entire city. So to say the opera is in the urban centers, norm normally is not in the in the in the urban peripheries, so to say, and the central offices of uh, more of the ministries and administrative places in capital cities are in the urban centers, not in the peripheries. There is a great where the greatest diversification and concentration of economic activities are, and of course with a high added value and consequently very higher land prices. They attract a large part of the urban displacement of the whole city and, I, and even in the even from the metropolitan area. I must say that also there are in the urban centers and especially in the old uh, in the old parts and the old core is where the usually the gentrification phenomena occurs. This is where the uh, sometimes where this uh, expulsion of local population. But this is a very very different uh, problematic that that we have dealt in a uh, next century project. And on the other side of the, met, uh, of the urban neighborhoods, there are the metropolitan rings. They are the utmost circle of the metropolitan regions, generally are separated from the properly called urban peripheries by areas with a low level of occupation and urbanization. And sometimes this uh, this occupied uh, or uh, more uh, low density areas are opportunity areas for the speculative processes and the in the in the urban uh, development. They are served by radio concentric and uh, motorized road networks and suburban and commuter transport networks, and they constitute normally a heterogeneous uh, reality made of a great variety of types of urban fabrics. I, uh, this is where normally even there are rural uh, the, or rural uses that can in, get into this uh, in these metropolitan areas. So low density urbanizations, all rural centers, and the main feature, feature is the range of distance to the peripheries and to the urban centers. And in this case, the majority of displacements are radial in nature towards urban centers and crossing urban peripheries. This is another added problem for urban peripheries. They they uh, they become the, the so areas for passing through, and the, and this is a, a problem, especially from the point of view of of uh, mobility of motorized mobility. So. This is the the range of definition we are using, and we think we I, I hope they serve to clarify something. What or what are we dealing with? And let's see uh, which are the problems and which are also solutions from uh, uh, this definition. So we can say the periphery is a, spe a special category. And this is uh, defined in relation with low content connectivity and land distance to central services and resources. So if we are, uh, talk about periphery, we can even uh, consider that suburbs are in the periphery in spatial terms. Yeah? So both hyperdensity and urban sprawl phenomena occur in the outskirts of city because these two different kinds of, uh, of urban fabrics are in, in peripheral, in a special term, in peripheral, in the periphery. So they can be of high or low income level. Land prices do not follow a simple center peripheral gradient, there are jumps in prices. In the case of Madrid, we have a, a low density, high income areas in the north of Madrid, uh, and we, we just by the side, same distance from the center of Madrid, we have uh, urban neighborhoods with a uh, with a uh, low income, uh, low income, and and high density. Uh, 
uh, mobility problems in low-income peripheries and mainly due to the lack of public and private investments in infrastructures and faci facilities and the lack of good initial planning. And sometimes this is the, the case with uh, urban, the poor urban peripheries. So, in uh, mobility terms, the greater the, the proximity and diversity of the central services and jobs to the residences, the greater the sustainability of urban space in terms of multifunctionality, mixed sex uses, and reduction of mobility nets. Needs as this is a, a, a general characteristic, and the greater the distance, even uh, apart from the the income, the greater the distance, the greater the speed necessary to access central services in competitive times, and greater in uh, in this uh, in full in full composition terms, and uh, in uh, in GHG emissions uh, and, and green greenhouse uh, gases emission. Which are the main difficulties, the main challenges in terms of equity and sustainability uh, within the framework of uh, mobility of urban peripheries? We have urban challenges. Low-income urban peripheries are comparatively monofunctional and poorly connected with uh, central uh, city services. The urban density in peripheries is not homogeneous. We have spoken about this before. High density consolidated peripheries go along with low density new development areas with low synergies among the respective uh, batteries of solution. So to say what is a solution for one is not good solution for other. New development areas have a long period of very low mobility uh, efficiency. This is uh, the case, especially in Madrid. We have a lot of new developments that due to the crisis get uh, somewhat stopped in the middle and they are not, they are poorly served by uh, public, uh, uh, tra public transport. There is a scarcity of public space on peripheral areas, especially in the consolidated urban neighborhoods to host all the needs related with these uh, identified uh, priorities. Political challenges, well, the investment in central cities are always more politically profitable. And uh, this is what uh, uh, gets to, to, to vote. If you make things in the visible place, the visible places are where the, a lot of people is coming around. So it's more, more, more profitable to make uh, inversions in the public space in the urban centers. Economical challenges with low land prices in urban peripheries contribute to urban sprawl. Cultural challenges, these are related with the, the vision and the culture of, of uh, mobility. High speeds and large size of vehicles are yet uh, culturally associated to high social status. So collective modes are yet cultural culturally associated with low social status e, at the, uh, and that is a, a, a general problem in, we have identified in general when we are dealing with mobility. Active modes are not generally considered a transport mode. I think this is changing very, very quickly. Uh, also, thanks to the <laughs> pandemics and now in, in Spain, uh, something has changed uh, at this respect this last respect. Which are uh, the basic objectives for equity and sustainability in urban peripheries? This is where it's in order to use this famous logo of the whole city as uh, the, the city of 15 minutes. And the idea, I think we say that the idea is to get the whole city as a 15 minute city. So to say, to, to, to get this, this kind of decentralization that permits that each of these urban neighborhoods functions as a sort of a, a 50 a 15 minute city. Which are the basic objectives regarding to urban planning? The guarantee mix uh, to guarantee mix of uses uh, to reduce commuting. We have to get more uh, per se, more uh, most proximity resident jobs and and get to this uh, city of the short distances. We have to extend 
the this quality of urban space to the whole city. Uh, this is, uh, I say, this is total gentrification. You ever be this very desirable in terms of visibility and and, and desire to go? We have a, a sort of a eliminated gentrification. This is a utopic ideal, but we should go to this uh, to this end. We had to create opportunities to both directions connectivity. We had to create an attractive metropolitan slot of centrality in the periphery, you know, and they 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 should uh, work also as economical drivers. Regarding mobility planning, we have to offer a rich model share, a wise model, multi -model, multi modality. I think one of the the ideas, uh, uh, king ideas or queen ideas of our project is that multimodality is the solution, not a one, only one mode can uh, can provide a solution for all the mobility problems. Uh, we have uh, uh, offer multimodality with a clear priority from uh, active modes, of course. And we have to guarantee the continuity. Uh, this is uh, the of active modes. The networks have to uh, permit to cross over and to go all over to 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 permit to allow for the uh, the accessibility to all the spaces in the whole city. In regarding uh, communication, we have to, this is a problem of I say to publicity marketing together. We have uh, we have to create awareness about the need of reducing the need of mobility in order to get better accessibility of for all. You know, one idea, idea I, I think, for me, I think it's important to say, there is not so, such a thing as a right to mobility. Uh, this is not a, it's a right to the city, but not a right to mobility. So we should rather uh, speak about uh, right to accessibility for everybody. Universal accessibility, but, no, but uh, we have to reduce much as possible the need the, of, of mobility. Eh? We should move only when it is necessary. So, which are the uh, conclusions and lessons learned? This is uh, lessons learned in these four years of, of the project. And I think uh, some of them come to validate the ideas we, bega uh, we began with and some others are uh, 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 different from what we thought at, at the at the beginning. Regarding public space, the importance of placemaking. Eh? We have to, to 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 allow more room for safe active modes, for greening of public space, as well as for shared services, for the revolution of freight set of by the e-commerce and for the new micro mobility. As I say here, the old distribution of public space has to be replaced with a, a more people-focused, people-friendly urban landscape fit for this multimodality approach we were speaking about. Uh, regarding local administration, the role of the city administration has been identified as paramount for the management of all these innovative uh, policies, and there is a need to plan a reserve public space for all the demands of the new uh, mobility, and this is only possible from uh, the administration uh, part. Participation, this is another paramount factor. The permanent dialogue with the stakeholders involved, businesses, research, but also residents and citizens as such, and especially the vulnerable groups. Vulnerable groups, uh, so old people, uh, majors, children, Women, uh, we, we can. It's, I, I don't like very much to to speak about women as, um, uh, as vulnerable, but we we think that uh, the point of view of uh, of gender, urbani has uh, has provided a lot of very uh, very crucial and very important uh, criteria for dealing with this. So participation is is an important tool. It's not an option. It's uh, necessary. For getting sustainability, uh, we it's very very uh, important to to be relevant to 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 get to a shared vision and uh, to build a, a shared vision of the future we want for our cities. Uh, so the inclusive approach and the cre co-creation are necessary to make possible 
uh, this change without negative impacts and strong relation by the people affected by the shift. This is very important. It's better to 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 ask and better to to inform than to wait for the 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 reaction. I I must uh, you must remember I, the the yellow the yellow jacks in 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 France. I think is in in Paris has some much to do with this with this reaction to to decision take, uh, taken without accounting with the, with all the people involved. Management, communication, and marketing are another very important factor. So uh, the information and transparency are key issues for this, all the topics related with this. And of course, always monitoring and evaluation. We should uh, always uh, see, measure and see and, and, and get lessons from what we do. And we, we, we must be uh, very flexible to, 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 to correct uh, our our path, our way, uh, depending of the, of the duration. So monitoring and evaluation is very important. So this is all uh, for my part. I hope this is will be useful for you in the in the in the following uh, debate. Thank you very much to you all. Thanks a lot, Carlos, for um, these great insights. I think that was really really interesting. Um, it's, I will give the floor um, for any questions if there are any, so please feel free to raise your hand or type a question. Um, um, sorry, I'm back. Um, I personally really like the idea of uh, just if you gentrify the whole city, there's no more gentrification. Um, and I think I would also, I would like to hear from you, what do you think, where are we at in Europe and in European cities with this type of thinking that you've just presented? Is this the paradigm shift or is this something that planners have been aware for a while? There's just challenges. Like, what do you, what would you say? Well, I think that, uh, well, I, I prefer to be optimistic. And I think this, much of these ideas are uh, rather mainstream, I should say, I dare to say, in uh, at least in the thought of, uh, mm -hmm. of the, People we are dealing with the with the city. I think there's a lot to do, uh, my uh, to do in terms of uh, policies, and a lot to do also in terms of citizen awareness. But I think we are in the good way. This is, uh, I think, is a, a topical thing to say now. But I think the pandemic has put a lot of these of these ideas in the in the in the table for everybody to to. To, to fear there is a lot of food for thought in this in this uh, regard uh, due to the pandemic we have seen uh, the public spread from a different um, from a different perspective and so I think I'm I'm obviously mystics in the in the in Europe I think we are now in a in the good path I, I don't know what uh, <laughs> Angel and Stefan think about this but this is my my view. Uh, great, uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a transition to our next presentation. It doesn't look like there's any questions at this point, um, but of course, uh, you know that there's at the end of the at the end of the meeting, there's also time for discussion. So, um, if anyone has a, wants to ask questions to Carlos, he will be around until the end of the webinar. So then you will also have time to do to ask okay. the questions. I will be happy to answer. Uh, any. Sorry. No, no, I will be happy to answer everything if I can. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so our uh, our next presenter um, is uh, Stefan Sinek from the city of Munich. Um, Stefan, are you with us? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Um, are you able to share your screen? Or I would you like so. me to do it for you? Yeah, okay. Uh, then. Yeah. I will make you presenter. Here we go. Okay. Can you see my first slide? Um, not yet, but maybe give it a moment. There we go. Yep, we can see it. Okay, thank you very much. 
So, uh, yeah, hello everybody. My name is Stefan Zinek. I'm working for the city of Munich. And I have worked in the past years as project manager for Svitas Eccentric. And I'm gonna present you more about um, this project. And because uh, the Civitas Eccentric Living Lab is situated in a peripheral district in Munich, so it can be interesting um, for you and an interesting model for Munich and other towns um, to um, use the results <clears throat> for a future planning of uh, newly built uh, districts in peripheral areas. Okay, so um, to start uh, with uh, Munich, uh, some framework. Um, so Munich is the uh, town in Germany with the highest density of population and one of the grow uh, strongest growth uh, in German, uh, Germany. So um, you see the, the numbers here in figures. And with uh, this uh, strong growth, uh, we talk about uh, 20,000 inhabitants uh, net uh, per year. Um, 10,000 new cars are coming to town every year. And this uh, since the last uh, 15 years. So um, you can imagine um, we have a lot of trouble uh, in traffic. So subjects like um, Monobo bursting, public transport, um, more and more car congestion. So we are always on uh, um, place number one or two of uh, towns in Germany with uh, traffic congestion air pollution and um, possible political restrictions, um, the traffic safety, of course, and uh, also the, with the pandemic, uh, we see uh, more and more um, problems with uh, logistics and uh, parcel delivery. So um, we know there is uh, something to do, we have to, to take action. And especially uh, when we uh, look in the future, uh, what's going uh, in the outskirts around uh, Munich, um, we got uh, two new uh, residents in the peripheral districts uh, under development right now, uh, we will um, have increased problems uh, in these districts. So um, the strong growth in our town leads to different new residential districts, and especially, of course, in the peripheral areas. And the, uh, the problem is that um, there is um, mostly a lack of uh, public transport uh, connection. And this uh, also in the next years. So we are not in China. We cannot uh, construct a new tram or subway line in uh, three or four years. Uh, that's not possible. So we expect, sadly, a lot of car commuters because we do not have uh, this uh, uh, 15 uh, minutes uh, city, what uh, Carlos talked about it. So most of people go to town because they're the big uh, companies. Uh, and when we uh, look, especially in the northern parts of Muni, Munich, um, there is uh, yeah strong growing um, of the population. Uh, and so we talk about uh, twice as the rest of Munich. And um, there are also most of the newly built uh, quarters in peripheral districts. And so we do not have the alternatives to private transport there uh, mostly. And there's a lo lot of uh, yeah, um, traffic congestion and uh, number of car commuters and road users are is increasing um, from year to year. So uh, this was one of the reasons why we selected um, a newly built quarter in the northern part of Munich in a peripheral district um, as our living lab for the Civitas eccentric project. Also, it's uh, very important to say that um, shared mobility provider, providers, so no matter if it's car pro, uh, car sharing providers or uh, e-scooter providers, um, they are normally uh, with their business area in the center. So they are collecting the cherries and the sharing are, cherries are in downtown and not in the peripheral district areas. So um, what we tried is to get these shared mobility offers uh, out of town to the peripheral districts. And we did this uh, in our living lab, actually talk about two different uh, areas. Um, the one is the uh, newly, completely newly built district Domagpark. You see the pictures on the left side. And it's a former barrack site with uh, much green areas, 
and it's more a village character, so it's um, a kind of um, a model, a newly built district for other planned uh, new districts in Munich, and highly regarded and also rewarded um, in Germany. And in the south, there's the Park Church Wabing, uh, has a different character. So um, more companies are there, big companies like Microsoft, for example, and MAN and hotels and it's more an exp expensive residential area suffering from lots of car commuting. So the goals of uh, Civitas Eccentric Munich was providing many different mobility services in uh, our living lab, then allowing residents to live a private car free lifestyle and to have uh, lower mobility costs, less traffic congestion, air pollution, better um, um, road safety and overall improved quality of life. And we implemented uh, and tested 12 different measures uh, with the help of seven partner inst institutions in Munich. And we did it this for the last uh, four years. So I will now tell you a little bit more about the measures and the goals of the measures, but only a certain measures, not all of the 12 measures. So first is the community information portal for the Domag Park. So um, this model uh, quarter I told you in the north uh, of our living lab. And it's uh, yeah, uh, an online portal um, with community information. So you get the news there about the neighborhood, all information which is uh, of importance. Uh, with a social dim dimension, but also with uh, mobility dimension. So you can find all the mobility offers there on their web page and there are updates about new um, mobility providers and shared of, uh, mode of transport um, you get there in, in your quarter. Second is the neighborhood oriented marketing of sustainable mobility services. So um, we did really a lot of promotion information campaigns and with different target groups. So the first one on the left side is um, are the uh, companies and employees. And uh, we did cooperation with the companies um, to uh, offer them a newly and developed ride sharing application. Uh, second uh, target group uh, were children and youth. And we did uh, in cooperation with the schools and the parents uh, uh, lots of different education mobility training and to sensibilize then uh, how to move in uh, public spaces uh, yeah, on the roads. And third, uh, that uh, yeah, all residents were addressed by us via direct and dialogue marketing uh, campaigns. So we cooperated with a call center uh, and uh, also um, a communication agency to promote sustainable modes of transport. So they got a lot of information material, all the residents, and could um, uh, try different uh, test trials from the shared mobility providers, for example. Then uh, transfer. Um, this is um, yeah intergenerational intergenerational uh, knowledge exchange which, between the senior citizens and schoolgirls and boys. And the goal was that first the teenagers uh, get knowledge about how it feels to be an elderly person. And they uh, then get trained in applications for sustainable mobility services. So shared mobility is public transport. And in different workshops, they passed on their knowledge in, to the senior citizens uh, how to organize daily mobility. So it's a big success and we did a lot of replication and to other towns in whole Europe with this measure. Uh, the Luftlotter, it's uh, also a newly developed uh, app for our city uh, lab. And the Luftlotter app uh, yeah, has uh, two functions. First, app users uh, can check the air quality around them, so in the living lab. And this information is integrated into a routing function. And depending on the air pollution, users can choose which route and mode of transport they choose. So they can avoid areas with high degrees of pollution while cycling or walking. Then we did uh, different um, tests and uh, measures with uh, preventive safety management. So um, we wanted to identify risk before accidents occur. And the goal is to increase safety, especially for vulnerable, vulnerable groups like uh, children. And therefore, uh, we conducted workshops at schools 
to sensibilize the pupils for dangerous spots around the school, for example, and uh, yeah, which occurred in the past uh, there. You certainly have heard or you know it from uh, your uh, town. Um, yeah, sustainable city logistics uh, with uh, cargo, bike delivery services and flexible storage system. Um, we did this uh, around our living lab and um, try to find uh, this uh, measure a new solution for the last mile delivery. And we tested um, on one side several kinds of boxes and logistic systems in cooperation with delivery companies and yeah on the other side it was a challenge to develop an attractive business model to be honest uh, for delivery companies and also in munich it's not so easy to find um, free parking space for the boxes then a very interesting um, and highly recognized uh, measure is the concierge system um, also difficult to implement and to develop a really working business model for all sides so the concierge system is an idea uh, which seems especially attractive for newly built areas we um, get a lot of uh, requests from from yeah other planners from uh, newly to, who are working on uh, projects of uh, newly um, built areas and yeah it should be a eco-friendly parcel delivery service which can be combined with other services, so laundry, for example. And in Eccentric, we tested two different concierge concepts with different delivery companies. Uh, well, but um, the financial part is not uh, so easy to um, yeah, find a solution for it, that it works. And then, uh, yeah, one of the most important, or this one of the yeah, most important and um, upscaled measure is the implementation of intermodal e-mobility stations. So we implemented overall four different um, e-mobility stations in our living lab. And this is a combination of uh, a number of services, services um, such as um, stationary and free floating, car sharing, pedelec sharing, bike sharing, uh, e-scooter sharing, the public Transport has to be in walking distance to a mobility station. So this was a determinant of our spatial, spatial analysis, uh, where to implement uh, such a station. And uh, there's also offer of charging stations for e-mobility. And yeah, uh, we wanted to promote the multimodal and intermodal um, mobility behavior with these stations for the residents. So um, we um, cooperated with all uh, mobility providers, with shared mobility providers um, in Munich and tried to get them uh, out of their, their normally, I call it cherry business area in downtown of Munich. And we could reach this with almost all the providers in Munich. So we'll talk about uh, this in a, in a second, a little bit more. Uh, first, uh, talk a little bit more about the e-track. Um, so this was actually, um, um, yeah, it should be a new concept uh, of uh, developing a, a new bike for, um, yeah, especially um, senior citizens and um, physical impaired people. Um, and it allows how to easy it to carry large and heavy shopping goods. So we conducted successful field tests and it should be part of the e-mobility stations but uh, actually um, there are kind of uh, technique problems and uh, we have to solve them for um, yeah, further development so they are not yet part of the e mobility stations but um, a completely newly part uh, in in the Domark Park and Park Schwaben, so in the um, peripheral area was the any uh, e-scooter and this was part of the mobility stations and until july 2018 the business area of the local e-scooter provider emmy was um, in the city center but we expanded the business area to the living lab so we cooperate and communicate a lot with the uh, the emmy uh, bosses and we did the same expansion also for um of the business area for other shared um providers like Espelec, the Espelec provider bond mobility and how you see here the um, business area of emmy 
And in the completely north, so there is a gap you see, um, which is not red in the north, uh, but there, there comes uh, another point, two other points. And this is these are the two um, first two mobility stations in our living lab. And so uh, we uh, could uh, fix for the first time um, a peripheral area as business area for ME in Munich. And uh, to reach that, um, yeah, we um, supported the provider and did a lot of promotion uh, via Civitas Eccentric. So uh, we did a lot of um, promotion communication via our social media channels, um, raffles and trials um, for free. And um, we also ordered um, and designed a new exclusive parking for e-scooters, a new sign. You can see it here. So only allowance for e-scooters to park there. And so um, the results were that um, 90, more than 90% 90 uh, of the residents in our living lab uh, knew about uh, the e-scooter offer. And 77% um, were confident, very confident with the e-scooter offer. And uh, starting from 0%, uh, we could measure in our via our household survey that more than 5% uh, increase uh, for e-scooter use uh, yeah, uh, was investigated. So um, this is a very, very um, positive result. Um, we did a lot of evaluation in our project, of course, um, uh, besides the main uh, research with the household survey, with two measurement points, we did uh, quality research with focus group interviews, user experience workshops and also, also uh, other workshops with the residents. So uh, participation of the residents and institutions, organizations, there was very important for us um, to see uh, how they accept uh, our newly, uh, newly developed mobility offers and how confident they are with it. We also did a lot of dissemination work. So we presented uh, our results and our measures on different events, conferences. Um, we were rewarded um, for the project. Um, and uh, we did, as I told you, a lot of um, promotion activity via social media. So Instagram, Facebook, YouTube were very important channels. And um, we see that um, working with these channels and direct dialogue com campaigns with the residents um, are important communication instruments also for the future for newly built areas in the periphery in Munich. So we will um, make an upscale of also not of the measures, mobility measures, but also of um, the communication strategies uh, we implemented in Civitas Eccentric. So um, overall, lastly, coming to the outcomes, uh, we see that uh, yeah, the most important impacts we see on policies and urban mobility strategies in Munich. So, basing on different measures, uh, several resolution, re resolutions passed the Munich City Council in the last years, uh, like, for example, very important, the citywide upscaling of um, shared mobility and also the mobility management. So, for example, dialogue and direct marketing campaigns. And um, also important for um, the newly built uh, areas um, in the future is that uh, we integrated um, in the tenders um, for the housing societies an integrated mobility concept. So for newly developed peripheral districts. This means uh, that the reduction of the required number of car parks per accommodation from 1.0 to 0.8 is required. And uh, how can you do this uh, as housing society? Of course, you can offer shared mobility on your private ground, but uh, we support it also, of course, with uh, shared mobility on the um, public ground. So it's a mixture. Uh, uh, what we're going to do in the newly peripheral areas um, of shared mobility in the, on public and on, on private uh, ground. And yeah, we went how I tell you, you we will address uh, the residents when they um, get completely new to these uh, newly built areas with uh, different communication strategies 
and to sensibilize them for sustainable mobility offers. So that's all. Danke. Thank you very much. And I'm open for questions. Thank you, Stefan. That was really interesting. And actually, I also found it very impressive um, to see uh, this work of four years encapsulated in this presentation. It looks like you achieved a lot in Munich. Um, so yeah, as Stefan said, um, the floor is open for questions. If you have uh, any specific questions for this presentation now, feel free to raise your hand or type in a question. Um, and then, yeah, I think I'm also noticing that I'm really happy that uh, we have both Munich and Madrid here today, because I think the situation in both cities um, that you're starting with and the types of peripheral areas that you're working with are quite different. So I think uh, we can get two very different perspectives and two types of challenges. Um, and I think one thing that is different with Munich is that you're also working a lot with new residents, right? Of course, yeah. Um, we address especially yeah. um, new residents because we know from uh, scientific research that um, uh, when you have uh, changes in, in, your, in your biography, uh, for example, you uh, change um, your accommodation and you, you switch to another quarter, you're open for other changes and, uh, for example, for mobility behavior. So. This is a good point to address um, uh, sustainable uh, mobility of, um, to the new residents. Yeah, that's really interesting to hear. And I think that also leads over really well to our next presentation, because um, if I understand correctly, it's sort of an opposite situation where there's uh, not a big change um, in, in the living situation, but still a very important area of the city of Madrid to work with. So um, I think I would suggest we move to the next presentation by Angel. Um, Angel, I will make you the presenter now and you can, uh, yeah, um, tell us about the situation in Madrid and how you have worked with your peripheral areas, what the specific challenges were and uh, some uh, successes and also challenges that you've encountered. Okay, uh, thank you, Paula, and good morning to, to everybody. Uh, I hope you can hear uh, uh, me well and you can also see my presentation now on your screen. Yeah, we can see it. It looks good. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I, I, as you said, the situation in Madrid is different from the situation in, in Munich, in the sense that our neighborhood has a, a different pattern. Here is the situation of, of Vallecas. In, you can see it a small rural village in the vicinity of Madrid. And then what they call Puente de Vallecas, Vallecas Bridge, which was closer to, to, the, to, to the city. But it was really a... a uh, a work uh, a working people suburb with not so many inhabitants that was madrid in 1932 things changes have changed a lot in the city since then and now what we have is an enormous district with with almost 300,000 inhabitants but some of the of the basic of the basic socioeconomic traits of the of the of the neighborhood uh, remain there for example, we, this is a this is a, a, a place with relatively low, lower public transport standards compared to the with the, the rest of the city. Poor networks for pedestrians and cyclists. And cyclists, uh, I mean, the paradox here is that it is easier to go to the center of Madrid than it, than it is to move from one part of the district to another part of the district. The connectivity with the other peripheral districts in the north. And, the, and at the west of, of Vallecas is also difficult. And while well, we have the uh, uh, unemployment rates and income levels well below the city's average. So this is the kind of, of district we are trying to work with in the, in the framework of eccentric. Uh, we had uh, many measures in, in Eccentric and we have 11 measures in, in Madrid. Of course, not all of them were targeting 
specifically by Yekas. And in that sense, I think it is worth to, to, to have an overview of the whole project. And I, and I think it is worth to classify them in three different uh, big uh, chunks or, uh, uh, of measures. What we call the means focused measures, these are the measures that, so to speak, you just go to the market and, and, and just buy them because someone has, the, has, has already in, uh, developed the measure and it is close to, 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 to market implementation. Then we have what we call partnership focused measures in which the municipality has basically to, 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 to work closely with someone in the private sector uh, and also in the, in the research community to, to fine tune the, the measure and to really adapt, uh, find out some kind of solution that could be uh, adapted to the problem that the uh, eccentric had identified. And then we, we have what, uh, I would call the policy focused measures, the measures where basically it is not so much about technological innovation, it is very much about how you are you you are changing in the places and you are and you are working uh, with people. So well we have a little bit of everything, and I think that for today's purpose, these policy focused measures are the really interesting ones because they, they were the ones really tailored to, to Vallecas. We worked with vulnerable groups in the neighborhood. We also improved pedestrian itineraries in the uh, walking conditions in the, in the neighborhood. We improved also the cycling network. And we also attempted uh, to, to establish some uh, bus corridor linking the, the district with other peripheral districts, uh, in this particular case to the north. So this kind of tangential bus corridor, and well, I uh, just to 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 make a very long story short, I, I have to to say that uh, it was uh, surprisingly this apparently wonderful measure from a technical point of view. Then the residents proved that they were not so much interested in in, in getting that done, and they prefer the resources to be to be targeted to, to other priorities that they had. So it was a good lesson from, from us technicians about not trying to be too smart and try to really listen to the people before we, we just try to, to, to push forward these kind of ideas. So, uh, well, coming to partnership focused measures in which, the, as I said, the municipality or eventually the regional government had to work with, with other, with the private sector to to actually develop that the, the, the new concept what we had uh, we put in place an open mobility information platform so that any any developer of an uh, of an application can can have uh, get access to the to the to real time information from the public transport system and also from other from other associated uh, transport services like maybe parking or car sharing or whatever we also uh, accelerated the uptake of clean vehicles in the in the city, particularly in the metro in the in the municipal fleet, but also uh, working with uh, some private companies. We we put in place a consolidation center for urban logistics and also the associated regulations to 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 favor the the use of of clean vehicles and clean and these clean delivery concepts in in the city center. And we, uh, and we develop a, a prototype for an electric uh, cargo vehicle. Finally, there were also measures that were apparently already or almost ready to go to the market, uh, like this uh, smart parking management concept in which these are the headquarters of the, of the, of the uh, municipal bus, air, uh, bus company. And while well, this is the, 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 the entrance to the, to the parking, and so there was a green, a green mobility concept in the municipality, and there was the, the idea to, uh, to, to give priority to, uh, to, to, car, uh, uh, to cars with two, two people at least, so to, to try to, come out, to, to promote uh, carpooling in, 
in the in the company and then there was a whole a whole uh, system to detect how many people were in the car and to and to allow or not allow the entrance accordingly so uh, also the some innovative tools to increase road safety in which basically we developed a um, gis based platform system in the municipality to uh, to facilitate the detection of, of of safety of safety hazards in the in the in the city including our neighborhood and then also we established a monitoring system of the of the social of social media to uh, to to detect those safety hazards that that people or say of mobility hazards that people may identify and that not necessarily reach to the municipality but are discussed eventually in the social media and finally we also uh, implemented a hybrid buses in one of the of the of the lines of the bus of the bus municipal company so let's focus on those policy you know, what i call the policy focus measures the ones that were really targeting our neighborhood and let me say uh, before what, what is different about these policy focus measures compared to the other ones in the project I would say that they are associated to, to values. They, they are not so much about, about what I am doing, but about the how. Why, I, well, why the why, 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 why am I doing this? Probably uh, this, this, are, this is associated to values like, well, uh, uh, giving better mobility conditions to, to the elderly or uh, facilitating the autonomy of the children. The, these are values that may be very widely shared, or in other cases, they, be, they can be very controversial politically. You know, that is the case when you say, I am promoting biking in this particular neighborhood. Well, who are the bikers, who are not, which, which, uh, which is going to, uh, to, to happen to those using that, that space, usually cars. I mean, the, the, there are controversies and, be, and what is relevant is that, that there is there are values. There is this, a discussion on values. There is a political discussion, and then there is obviously there is the need to to, to build a strong political coalition to move forward. It is not so much about about mobility at the end of the day. It is really about democracy. What we are talking about. Uh, it, they are different from the other measures also in terms of knowledge creation. Well, what is knowledge in this case? Uh, I, obviously, in this case, knowledge is not that much about creating uh, developing technology. Knowledge is not about uh, about to, about uh, uh, empowering local democracy. So, uh, we, we are creating knowledge in the sense that we are developing new ways of of, of making people more more uh, more uh, putting people more at the center of decisions. So knowledge is something a pragmatical thing here. It is uh, knowledge is valid because it is useful. It is useful to make that transformation. It is useful to build up a community in Vallecas. It is useful to to empower people to 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 uh, to participate in a, in, a, in in democratic deliberations. So this kind of of measures of policy focused measures can only be implemented where the, the political context is favorable. And I think what fortunately that is what we found in in Madrid uh, during our project implementation. And also, well, there are those values of solidarity and effectiveness that are at the front. I, I would I would I would highlight uh, that we have mm, mm, this word effectiveness, not efficiency. It is not about that utilitarian approach that we are used to to to, to implement. It is it is not about costs and benefits. It is really about achieving what what are most uh, poli uh, what are mainly uh, political uh, political goals. And also in terms of implementation, these values uh, or policy focus measures need uh, need to be very very strongly tailored to the context. To the to the conditions, to the particular conditions in Vallecas. Uh, the problem is that what you are, uh, I, the more you adapt, in some cases, the the more you kill in terms of technological innovation, the more disappointed you are as a as a transport professional about what is happening. But so I would say, well, there's there's not desperate on this. I mean, it is it is it, there is still inno innovation here. 
What is happening is that our innovation contribution is moving from the technological part, from, uh, from the technical part, it is moving to the, uh, so to speak, to the process part. It is the process that becomes more important and we are more uh, agents of, uh, of, 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 of delivering, agents of, of making a, a social process to happen rather than agents of, 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 technical, of technical innovation. So let me just give you a couple of examples because I, I think I have no time to go to, to all this, the four measures. And I, I, I will focus first on the walking paths in Vallecas, but we, we, I think we were successful in creating a different scenic, scenic urban escape. Of course, not in the enormous 300,000 inhabitants district, but, uh, but in, in, some, in some specific parts of the, of the area. So these are this um, this is this is one tactical uh, one tactical action we we implemented in one of the streets, and in this street what we are interested to 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 do is to is of course to 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 increase the space dedicated to the to pedestrians also the space uh, dedicated to to uh, to bicycles, and 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 also well. You, you, you see that it is not uh, really the, the particular place you would go for a for a walk and for relaxing. I mean, it is it is also to to get aware, and that's why I put this picture here. It is to to get aware of how how neglected the, the scenic urban escape many times are in in this kind of of neighborhoods. So we made this tactical action, and then the the municipality is now moving forward and making a permanent one, and also introducing the the, the improvement of the of the escape uh, elements here, and then well uh, we we develop a whole strategy for the neighborhood, which is basically these are the main the main um, itineraries that we identified, and we identified one particular uh, uh, high quality pedestrian corridor, which uh, was interesting because it was linking different. Uh, uh, different landmarks in the in the district, and they were providing a much needed connection between the north and uh, and the south of the of the of the neighborhood. So, well, this was a part of a comprehensive walking network for all the for all the for all the district. We had also, and I and I would like to highlight this: local mobility regulations revised, the municipality revised the well, the mobility ordinance. And that not only for the neighborhood that was made for the city as a whole, but it was particularly uh, implemented in in the uh, uh, in Vallecas in the framework of eccentric. There were also new signalization concepts implemented in in Vallecas thanks to to the project. So well, and we got some good results from that. We got uh, evidence of walking distance significantly increased. In the this in the vicinity of the streets that has been uh, that have been improved, and also we got a, a high levels of acceptance uh, from from the residents when we interviewed them at the end of the project, just before the the COVID the COVID uh, the COVID crisis. As, and the second the second action I would like to highlight is our is the is the the measures of the of the project with two particular vulnerable groups in the neighborhood, the, the elderly and, 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 the, and the children. Children and teenagers, I, I, I should say. So you, you see here the picture of one of the squares that were, that were re redesigned in a co-creation process with the, with the elderly. And we managed uh, again to, to evidence that uh, what uh, we technicians were identifying as priorities in, in landscaping, but also in the provision of, of equipment and, and services here was 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 really not what the what the the others were, were asking us to, to do. So it was a good lesson to to learn what uh, what the priorities of the users are and then how to accommodate our knowledge to those priorities rather than the other way around. And then we have here the, the, the uh, interaction between the children and teenagers and, and, and senior citizens. I think that's, that's similar to what uh, Munich also, also did. Uh, in, in our case, we were focusing on conviviality 
and in the in in the bus in within buses. Then so people were is, uh, essentially blaming each other, the elderly and the children, about how they were behaving within the bus, and it was very positive in the sense of identifying the those 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 questions, trying to to get uh, some kind of of uh, interaction, some kind of put uh, some sort of putting your, your putting yourself in uh, in the in the shoes of, of of other people with other with other conditions and, and well again in coming to 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 practical lessons for for the bus for the for the bus service company. <clears throat> So well, we were we were basically able to to put in place those collaborative design workshops. We established, in particular, what we call critical critical walks, in which people were walking the the neighborhood. They were identifying uh, things that needed needed to be changed. Increase. Well, I think we the, this measure managed to increase the self autonomy and reduce the dependence of both groups, uh, children and 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 the elderly. We were able also to 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 make um, to make decision makers and and professionals and technicians uh, more aware and how to tailor their services to the to the needs of these vulnerable users, and also we were successful in reducing the use of cars compared to other transport modes. Although, of course, cars cars were not the, the main the main the main transport uh, transport means used by by these by these groups so which are the lessons learned from from Vallecas I think that we can say that transport can contribute to the social recognition of disadvantaged groups social recognition meaning not only to provide better mobility services but also to make them more influential in decision making at large uh, we were able also to identify disadvantaged groups priorities and I think this is something that it is not necessarily done in the sustainable urban mobility planning we are we are we are usually doing doing in our cities in Europe. So that means it was some like a call of attention about well you you, you need to revise what you are doing in in, in those plan in, in those in that planning you are doing because you need to 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 really put those people at the center and not just to communicate what the, the, the very good ideas you have in, in terms of sustainability as a technician and we also identify some privacy barriers that make difficult to mainstream alternative approaches in Vallecas and I dare say in, in, in any in any neighborhood of these characteristics so uh, it is obvious that most transport stakeholders still prefer to give their autonomy rather than interact with other with other people and particularly to interact with other social uh, or or public or public policies such as public space uh, design or, um, or 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 education in our, in our case it is also obvious that transport professional uh, I prefer to influence the process outcomes rather than to facilitate the, the discussion. We tend to to uh, to chaperon too much our our users. Uh, we we know too much to to well what has to be done, and, and we are. It is difficult to 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 put ourselves in listening mode. We put too much focus on technological in, innovation and disregard other possibilities. And also, it happens that the bureaucracies, municipal bureaucracies, uh, uh, have difficulties in, in pushing forward in uh, accelerating the implementation of this kind of innovative approaches. So uh, I, I think we have accomplished a lot in, in, in Madrid and in Accentris in terms of improving liveability, in terms of meeting the needs of vulnerable groups, advancing in collaborative planning, integrating our different transport services and influencing model choice and of course additionally we got some good results in terms of environmental impacts but we, there is something else to do i think uh, one of the lessons learned is that uh, we need to to really rethink how we are making sustainable urban mobility plans and try to to, to put users and particularly vulnerable groups more at the center of the co co of the designing process and we and also in our evaluation we need to to refocus it is not 
I think uh, one, uh, these measures are not successful because they are achieving modal change or they are reducing emissions. This is a, a plus, of course, and this is a very important plus. But what is important here is to increase life, is to improve livability and to engage people in decision making. Well, these are the, the things I wanted to share for you, and I thank you for your time and attention. I'm ready for questions. Yeah, thank, thank you so much, um, Angel. I think this was really interesting and a great overview of what you've been doing in Madrid. I should also say um, we're open for questions. Anyone who has a question to any of the presenters, please feel free to ask it now or to raise your hand. Um, I should also say a lot of these measures that we are discussing today have already been presented in um, other webinars in a bit more detail. So if you would like to learn more about specific measures such as the um, Munich measure on mobility stations, you can find a webinar from earlier this year. Um, a lot of the work that Madrid has done working with vulnerable groups, we have also presented during a webinar that was held this summer. And during the same webinar, the city of Munich also presented their transfer measure um, of how to engage uh, elderly citizens with youngers to learn about sustainable mobility. Um, so uh, just want to know if you're interested in these specific topics, you can also go back and find the presentations. Um, yeah, and thanks again so much to the presenters. I, um, I have a question to both Angel and um, Stefan. You, you both mentioned that you worked a lot and you worked closely with the citizens. If you were to give any advice to other cities that are looking to work um, on the topic of peripheral areas and to engage their citizens, what would it be? What have been your greatest successes and what were some challenges? Well, maybe, maybe I, I start, maybe. I, I would say in terms of, 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 of lessons learned and so to speak, great successes. It is, it is really to you, you. You have to spend a lot of time, and you you have to go to the places where those people are. In in our case, working with the seniors, it was going to the to the daily to to daily activity centers for for seniors. It was really uh, participating hours and hours in, in in a lot of meetings, and it is really to 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 try to. Uh, to, to to avoid to to giving solutions because they actually identify their problems. They 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 that change completely our 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 perspective. And in terms of of also uh, what not to do, it is it is really the opposite. It, it is for example that kind of tangential bus corridor that was costing about some uh, some millions some uh, some million euros. And then people basically were saying, the residents were saying, well, listen, what we really need is, is other things in, and not necessarily mobility in this in these neighborhoods. Why do, 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 don't you spend those 10 million euros in, in, in other things, in, in our public space, in improving the, the facilities that are there and improving the, our parks and not necessarily mobility? So it was, I think that is a very important lesson. Because we are we are working in our small niches and and it is uh, we and we think that mobility is is central. Uh, well, maybe it is central, but it is not the only thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Thanks, uh, Stefan. You want to comment on that or um, give the Munich perspective? Um, yeah. Um, I would like to add something um, in Munich from our perspective. Um, we learned that. Uh, especially of importance um, to talk with all relevant stakeholders, so not only the residents, but also um, institutions, companies, organizations there, mm -hmm. political representatives, um, the providers of the mobility offers. So um, this is a, a really uh, important point um, um, to talk with them, to make workshops with them at the beginning, um, in the middle of the project and in the end to uh, get uh, lessons learned. Um, what we saw is that uh, actually when you want to communicate with all the residents, it can also be a kind of barrier, to be honest, um, because when you uh, present in a room with 100 uh, people, you get 100 different opinions <laughs> in the worst case. So uh, we tried to talk with their representatives, so the political representatives in the neighborhoods and the neighborhood representatives. 
And um, this direct communication uh, was really a success um, factor. Uh, but uh, let's uh, say um, the implementation, spatial um, implementation of mobility stations, it's not so easy. It's uh, a lot of uh, frictions there and determinants uh, where we can actually uh, put one of these stations. And if you want like, um, to take into account all the opinions of a single and, um, inhabitant, it's going to be difficult. So um, talk uh, at round table with the representatives, that's important. Um, but uh, our lesson learned is also not to go too much into detail with um, individuals, um, because in Germany normally the things are not going so fast like maybe in other countries, so um, you lose also a lot of time with the discussions. So this is uh, our learning, but overall, it's a positive effect to communicate, to be transparent with the residents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Um, and also interesting to hear the perspective that you've been communicating with these companies a lot. Um, I think at first they were a bit reluctant to um, work with uh, this concept, but then we're quite excited actually um, towards the end, am I right? All right, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, the, we had, what we saw is that um, there's a kind of um, negative vibe between the companies and uh, the residents in our living lab, um, mm -hmm. because the residents feel like uh, the companies um, only look at their employees and to provide for them cost basis and um, for the clients as well. And the resident said uh, in one of these communication panels, um, so we were the first ones there in the living lab, the companies uh, came after us and we have a lot mm -hmm. of problems, uh, pollution and traffic safety and so on. So you have to get them on the table and we expected that um, we had to do it actually during the um, planning process of this uh, project of the newly built area and not after several years what we did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting to hear. Great, yeah. Um, thanks to both uh, for your perspectives and thanks again for the great presentations. Um, if there's no further comments or questions from the audience uh, or for any, from any of the speakers, um, I would suggest we uh, close the webinar today. I think it was really interesting. Thanks for taking the time um, and thanks for drawing some conclusions on the topic of sustainable mobility in peripheral areas. And um, we will be making this webinar available. Um, the recording will be online on the Eccentric YouTube channel. Um, and if you have any questions or want to ask, uh, get in touch with any of the presenters, you can always contact us. Um, and then we will make sure that happens. And as I said, there's also material available on all of these measures on the pages where you can get uh, very interesting step-by-step -step guidance measures, a lot of lessons learned there also. So if you want to get into any more detail on the measures that we've heard of today, then also please visit the website. Um, and yeah, thanks again to all the speakers. And um, I wish you all a great um, rest of the day, great afternoon, and um, see you next time. And... Great. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.